Hello guys, in this video that is going to be taken from inside our course, we're going to be going over some important details of the solar spectrum and how it can affect the windows you're tinting when it comes to architectural window film. Now, architectural window film is often overlooked in this industry and you can sometimes make five times the amount doing an architectural window film job as opposed to doing a car window tinting job. But there is more theory involved and there really isn't anywhere to learn this theory, which often scares so many car window tinters away as you know, they're afraid of breaking the glass if they use the wrong film or just not understanding how all of this works. And you know, if you didn't know, we've teamed up with Kepler Window Films to create the world's largest architectural window film course that covers just about every single aspect film from you know customer pain points, film types, glass types, and even security window film. And I'm gonna put a link below if you're interested and you know you really want to go full on with this. But we wanted to post this video just to try and you know help our subscribers get started and push them in the right direction. I know that we have been quiet in this channel, but we do look to start things back up again this year. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the exciting videos that will be coming up following this one. Now in this lesson, um, we're going to go into some of the science of the sun and the solar energy that we need to focus on. Again, you know, get that pen and paper ready because this may feel like it's really technical, but the more notes you take and the more you rewatch it, it's just going to keep getting easier and easier. So first, we're going to talk about the sun solar energy and what it does to the earth and the glass that we tint. Now, the three sources of solar energy that we need to focus on are ultraviolet rays, also known as UV rays. We have visible light and we have infrared radiation, also known as IR. Now to us, only one of these sources we can actually see with our eyes, and that is of course visible light. The other two, ultraviolet rays and infrared rays are not visible to the naked eye. But you know, we do have instruments that can make it possible for us to see these energy sources. Now, just because we don't see them doesn't mean that, you know, they're not damaging our environment or our skin. They have different roles that they play and, you know, window film can battle against each of these three sources differently. So again, you know, there are three main sources. Number one, again, was UV rays. Now, this one has the most influence on human health and you know they're the ones that are responsible for 40 percent of why things fade and deteriorate alone and it's what attacks our skin with sunburn regardless how hot or cold it is this is why you know you can still get sunburn through the clouds these uv rays can actually pass through the clouds for instance um, sun cream this offers uv protection window film is the equivalent of 1000 spf sun cream and a study shown by the newcastle universal scientists show that visible light and infrared rays cannot cause sunburn alone, nor are they a cancer risk. These UV rays alone are responsible for this. You know, some insects and animals are actually able to see UV light, but it just seems so foreign to us because all we do is think about visible light and we think this is what gives us a sunburn. And second up is just that, and that's visible light, which I'm sure you know what it is. This is the light that we see as humans, so really straightforward. It's just, again, the rays that provide light and it's basically you know, how we see things. Everything that's formulated from your entire life experiences has come from visible light. And the third and final source of solar radiation is gonna be infrared also known as IR radiation. And this is the rays that mostly provide heat. Now, this isn't visible to us, but you know, I'm sure that you've seen um, infrared before through some instruments like on you know, a police helicopter chase, for instance, when the visible light is low. So you know, the light source that we use, um, and if they can't see a suspect hiding in the woods, for instance, um, they can turn on the infrared cameras and see infrared rays instead of visible light. And this is basically what is giving off heat so they can see thermal heat. Now, all of these three things are responsible for solar radiation as a whole, but they all have different shares in how much they are responsible for it. So UV rays is responsible for 3% of the solar radiation, and visible light is responsible for 44% of the solar radiation, and infrared is responsible for 53% of the solar radiation. So again, all these things combined is basically how the solar radiation or solar heat hits the earth. Now again, you know, don't get overwhelmed, it's really basic stuff. Um, if you need to write this down, you can, it's gonna make it a lot easier. But you know, we've learned so far the three sources of energy from the sun spectrum that we need to worry about. Um, I'm sure, again, you've seen a UV light projector before, maybe in a tanning bed or even a UV bulb known as a black light. You've obviously seen visible light, you know, like a light bulb or just anything we see you know, outside. And I'm sure that you know, you've seen a heater which gives off infrared heat. Now, when you combine 
all of these three things into one, the sun's energy emits all of these three things at once, you know, it beats it down on the earth. Now, when all of these three sources of energy we've talked about are packaged into a combination of solar energy, when it hits an object, that object is gonna have three choices of how it wants to deal with it. It can reflect the solar energy away, it can absorb it into itself or it can transmit it. Really simple, there's three things it can do. Now this is known as the RAT equation, reflectance, absorbance and transmittance. Now all of this is always gonna equal 100. So for instance, if this energy um, hits the black seats on your car, so the energy from the sun with these three things all packaged up, hits the seats in your cars, it's black. So it's not gonna reflect any heat away and it cannot transmit anything through itself like glass. So the only option it has is to absorb all of this energy into itself. And this is why when you get in your car sometimes, you know, the black seats can be really, really hot because it has no choice other than to absorb all of the energy into itself. And now if we talk about snow, the complete opposite, you know, this is white. Um, it cannot absorb barely any of this energy because it's white and it cannot allow it to pass through it. So the choice that this is gonna have is to reflect it. And this is why that, you know, you're at even more risk of getting sunburned if you're in the mountains and there's a lot of snow because all of this reflected energy is coming off the snow and hitting your face. So now you understand all that, you know, really basic stuff. If you understand that, we're gonna get into how all this fits into windows and window film. Now, if we have 100% of that solar energy, from the sun and if this hits a clear pane of glass it will reflect eight percent of this energy away it will absorb nine percent of this and it will allow 83 percent of this energy to pass through it now if we look at a 20 percent neutral gray film so a darker film from this 100 percent of solar energy that hits it it will allow 27 percent to be reflected away it will now absorb a massive 52 percent of this energy again being a blacker finish and it will transmit 21% through itself. And the detail that we need to focus on here is gonna be the absorbance. You know, pretty much everything on this planet will expand when it absorbs heat from the sun. And the darker the film you choose, the more that is gonna absorb this energy. So it doesn't just, you know, absorb it into itself, into a sheet of window film. It's gonna absorb it into the glass that it is installed on. And again, when it absorbs this energy, it's gonna cause it to expand. And the more energy it absorbs, the more it expands. So you have to think about that. This is the glass that can expand because we've installed a window film that absorbs heat. So now here's where it gets, you know, really interesting and where our expertise are gonna come into play. Now, glass, is designed to absorb heat and expand freely, which it does no problem at all. You know, glass can absorb heat, no problem at all. Glass doesn't crack because it's absorbed too much heat. In most cases relating to window film, glass cracks because it's absorbed heat and it's trying to expand, which is again what it can do, only to be met by the cooler glass, so the colder glass that is around the edges that are behind the frame. They're protected from the solar energy behind the frame. So the glass around the edge is gonna be cold and this can crack a lot easier, especially when it's met by warm glass. So what happens is when the glass expands, it hits these cold sections around the edge of the glass, which again can crack easier, and these two clash, which can cause it to crack. So again, you know, Glass expands completely fine and contracts completely fine. But what it doesn't do is when it meets a cold area of the glass that is a lot weaker and it doesn't want to move. And these two clash and it can cause it to crack. Now, this is called a thermal stress crack and it's more likely to happen on weaker glass types. The stronger glass types like tempered, which we're gonna go through, are a lot less likely to crack. But we have to identify, you know, which glass can absorb which amounts of energy before we have any problems. Now again, when it comes to knowing what film you can install to what type of glass and if it absorbs too much heat to cause problems, um, really luckily for you, this is already calculated with film to glass charts. And you're not expected to turn up to jobs and start making calculations on the glass or anything like that. Um, again, the top suppliers like us have already done all of these calculations for you. Um, we know the maximum absorbance of all the different types of glass and their different limits. It's really straightforward. We're just gonna go deeper into how they come up with these calculations. And you know, this isn't just a, a simple window film problem. Um, glazing companies also have to be really careful when they're installing glazing systems. And thermal stress has to be calculated into all the different projects they do. Again, 
don't get overwhelmed. Many tink companies who have been operating for years, you know, they don't even know any of this information and you're already ahead of them if you understand this. They just follow you know, the do or do not guide and operate just fine. Again, you know, we just want you to be armed with this information. Plus, you know, this is all really interesting to me and I hope it is really interesting for you. And you know, you'll be able to express these interests to your customer, which is gonna make you a better salesperson.